When I say that it is looking bad for Kamala Harris, that is not an overstatement. Because I believe genuinely, seriously, there is no comeback for what she has just done. And this is not just my opinion. I am going to show you what they're betting on in the polls right now and why Trump is taking such a drastic lead. This is not even funny anymore. Personally, I believe that there is a biblical reason why this has just taken place and you're gonna want to stick around because while I do not waste your time I'm going to give you the truth and nothing but the truth get ready for your mind to be blown well, first of all if you want to know more about political stuff and I also share with you biblical teaching sound word of God teaching then make sure to subscribe right now now I'm about to, to show you this and these are not my opinions these are numbers that people are betting on the poly market and this is what they are projecting now get prepared to have your mind blown because as I scroll up here you can actually see this is crazy Donald Trump who at one time was losing projectedly to Kamala Harris is now 65% and she is at 34% like I said this is no coincidence and I'll get to that in a second but I need to show you this crazy thing if you scroll down to the states that he is projected to win you will actually see many of these swing states that he said hey it probably is going to Kamala or many people said it's probably going to Kamala but now the odds are ever in the favor of Trump and you can actually see some of these swing states right now so right here I just looked up what have always been the swing states and this is common knowledge for anybody who knows politics Nevada Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and then Georgia. Now, just even a few weeks ago, these were projected to still be swing states, and some were even saying these were going to go to Kamala Harris. But with the recent events that have occurred, that has all changed big time. Because if you look at this map right here, and I scroll over to the poly market, you can see that these states have actually swung into Donald Trump's favor. You can see Arizona, 74% chance Trump wins it. Nevada, 63% chance. These were swing states just two or three weeks ago. And then you swing over to Pennsylvania. What is it? 62% for Trump. And then Michigan, Wisconsin, and then Minnesota is the only one that I see here that was swing states that is still a Democratic state. And just to put my point across, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, what is it saying with Georgia? 71%. North Carolina, 70%. Now, I'm going to share with you a thought here. You may have never even thought about this. Why do you think North Carolina has swung over to Trump? It's because who had feet on the ground when all of that North Carolina hurricane happened? It was Trump. When Carolina went through all this stuff with hurricane and the winds and the disaster and the damage, it was catastrophic. And what did Trump do? He showed up on the premises, opened up his Trump hotel for many people to stay in, and he helped and cared about the American people. And what did Kamala Harris do? She didn't do really anything. Neither did the current president who was Joe Biden. So this makes complete sense for why these swing states, all of them except for one, which is still Wisconsin, have swung over to Donald Trump. Now, of course, it still is not election day because four years ago, and I could get a lot into stuff about that, we thought that it was gonna look, it was looking a lot like this as well. And then we all know what happened in 2020 with uh, President Joe Biden. So this doesn't mean that us as Christians should just take our foot off the gas pedal and I'm not going to vote because it's already projected. No, 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 no. If a million people thought that way, this election could be overturned into Kamala's favor. But we as Christians need to get up and do what we are responsible to do. Vote. And then if you actually look down here, you can see that right after the debate that they had, Kamala Harris was actually on top for a little bit. This is around that debate. And then you see just over time, Kamala Harris goes down. See, she was up 50 and he was 49. And then it goes down to where Trump is now, boom, 65. Kamala Harris is 34. Now, I personally believe that this is happening because the American people are waking up to the truth. I have another video where I show Elon Musk has woken up to the truth. And I don't want to rehash this because I'm sure you have already seen this, but this is another angle of where Kamala Harris 
told the people who shouted Jesus is Lord that you're at the wrong rally. Listen. She says, oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. You should go to the smaller rally down the street, meaning referring to Donald Trump. And then you have Donald Trump who takes a harsh stance of supporting Christians. I don't need to tell you. I'll just let you watch it for yourself. See it with your own two eyes. It's a weird thing. Lots of strange things take place in politics, don't they? But I will create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias. That'll be done immediately. Hmm. This is his stance on Christians. Keep watching. And I think it's very important for the people in this room to know, like hmm. Dr. Ben Carson knows, Americans of faith are not a threat to our country. Americans yeah. of faith are the soul of our country, right? Yeah. And everybody's clapping because he's taking a stand for Jesus. And then you have his VP, who's, who's uh, J.D. Vance, and somebody yelled out, Christ is king. Jesus is king. And J.D. Vance at the rally said, you're right. Jesus is king. And everybody starts clapping. But then you have somebody at Kamala Harris's rally that says, Jesus is Lord. And she says, you're at the wrong rally. I personally, as a Christian, don't see how other Christians could support and vote for that. And just to make my point clear, if Donald Trump did what Kamala Harris just did the other day at that rally, I would not vote for Donald Trump. But he has taken a different approach and a different standard on supporting Christians. He truly believes Jesus Christ is king. So one reason that I believe that this is shifting is because A, God is blessing the person who is supporting him and who is supporting Israel. And then God is not going to bless the person who does not support Israel and who is not supporting Jesus. Because you cannot tell me what happened at that rally was just a coincidence. I believe what the Bible says about Israel. And I don't have time to get into that whole topic today. But God said, those who bless Israel, I will bless. And those who curse Israel, I will curse. If you looked at the stance of Donald J. Trump with Israel, it's very different from Kamala Harris's. And you may point out and say, but Caden, Kamala Harris hasn't done this or whatever, but there. Actively going for Israel, supporting it, that is Donald Trump. The person who doesn't seem to care that much is Kamala Harris. So God is going to bless one candidate over another because they stand with Israel. And because they just simply stand with the Bible. Donald J. Trump believes Jesus Christ is king and he allows that at his rallies while the other one basically tells the person who yells that Jesus is Lord get out now I want to end it with this just because you're seeing all of this happen does not mean like I mentioned a moment ago it does not mean that we as Christians can take our foot off the gas we as Christians have a mandate from God to vote. And you may say, but Caden, there's no Bible scripture on that. There may be no Bible scripture that specifically says, John 7, 14, thus says the Lord, vote for Donald J. Trump, vote for Kamala Harris, or whatever it is. But the Bible does give us a mandate that we are supposed to support righteousness. And like I've said before on this channel, we are not voting for skin color. We are not voting for gender. We are not voting because of personality. Yeah, there's a lot of things that if I were in control of Trump, I would change it. I would do this. I would do that. But I'm not in control of Trump. But if you look at both parties, and if you look at which one stands for the Bible more, you can obviously see one stands for the Bible more than the other. One actually stands for life more than the other one stands for israel more than the other and you may disagree with that but if you look at the bible and if you look at both candidates there is obviously one person who agrees with the bible more than the other so i'll just leave it with this i believe if i have my numbers right that there has been about 41 million christians who have not registered to vote that should not be 
us as Christians, we should be the people who lead the way and go vote. We can't let wicked people go vote and get somebody in office. Because I'm telling you this right now, where this election goes in about 14 days will determine a lot of the outcome of America, not just over the next four years, but over the next generation. Your kids will be affected by who gets in office over these next four years. This is very important. I personally believe this is the most critical election that we have had up to date. And of course, you may say, Caden, you're so young. Yeah, I might be young. I might not have even been alive when Ronald Reagan was alive. But I can still see past the lines. And as a young person, I can still see and discern what is going on with our nation we have a mission we have a mandate we need to go and vote for righteousness we need to get out there christians and we need to tell people the truth we need to share this with others because guys this is so vital so important on november 5th go vote and vote the party that you believe lines up with the bible maybe not all the way but more than one specific candidate. Before you leave, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or maybe at one time you did, but you've fallen away from the Lord, all you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me right now and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Say it to God and genuinely repent of your sins. Close your eyes, bow your head, say this after me. Say, Father God, I believe Jesus died and rose again for me. I confess my sins. I repent for my sins. Forgive me. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me now. I confess Jesus is Lord. I turn from my old ways and I give my life to Jesus. In Jesus name, amen. If you just said that prayer, the Bible says you've received the free gift of eternal life. Now this is not the ending, this is just the beginning. And I have a whole lot more content on my YouTube channel about how to live the, a Christian life effectively. Go watch my other videos so that you can build your relationship with the Lord. Now, before you leave, I wanna give you this opportunity. About a year ago, I would say, yeah, it was a little over a year ago. I, no, it was actually a year ago this month. I got demonetized from YouTube. And there is a people out there, a wicked agenda that is trying to crack down on Christians who preach the truth. Now, if that happens, that means that you get demonetized. And they, they, they could try to do that. I don't know if they're going to try to do that. But I want to give you another opportunity for you to partner with me financially. There is a Patreon link down in the link in the description or the link in the pinned comments. And you can actually support me and what God has called me to do even if they demonetize me on YouTube. I have three different levels of partnership there and I have perks for people who partner. Free merchandise for one level. Everyone who partners gets in free monthly Zoom calls with me. And then I have different perks for showing you updates behind the scenes with ministry and my travel. God has given me a mission to travel this nation of America and not see the wicked agenda come to pass while I'm here on this earth. I believe that God is raising up a, a new generation, a young generation, who's going to preach the gospel and bring revival to this land. God loves America, but he needs people who will go and preach the uncompromised truth of the word of God. Listen, if you would like to support me and help me go fulfill the vision God has given for my life, then all the ways to partner are down below right now. It does take funds to do what God has called you to do. And I thank you for your partnership. But I'll tell you this, the Bible says in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given, press back, Press down, shaking together, running over. God will cause men to give back to you. I believe today that as you give, stand on that word that God, you said you would give back to me because the Bible tells us whatever we sow, we will reap. So challenge, I challenge you with that today. I would love for you to go partner with this ministry and thank you for believing in the vision God has given me genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Hey, more content will appear upon your screen right now. Go watch that. I love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in.